So what factors affect how strong that London force is? Well, firstly, the number of electrons. Secondly, the size of the electron cloud. And thirdly, the shape of the molecule. We now need to write an explanation for each of these factors. So firstly, the number of electrons. Well, the more electrons there are, the greater the distance between the valence or outer shell electrons and the nucleus. This decreases the attraction between the electrons and the nucleus, meaning that the electron cloud is more easily polarised, i.e. more easily distorted. And so, as an example, notice that krypton, which is a noble gas, has a higher boiling point than neon, also a noble gas. And if you look in the periodic table, it's because krypton has much larger atomic number, so it has more electrons that can be polarised. So its London forces are stronger. Next up, the, the effect that the size of the electron cloud has on the size of the London force. So in a large electron cloud, the attraction of the electrons to the nucleus is obviously less. The electron cloud is therefore more easily polarised. And so if we compare octane, I'm just going to draw its structural formulae out. And we compare it to propane, which remember has three carbon atoms. Then clearly the electron cloud surrounding octane is going to be much greater than that surrounding propane. And so octane will have stronger London forces than propane. And it also goes to explain why you can make this generic statement, which is that the higher the molecular mass, the stronger the London forces. Lastly, if we look back up, we can see that the shape of the molecule will affect the strength of the London forces. Let's take two isomers in order to explain this. Remember that isomers have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. And so if I use C5H12 as my example, let's draw its straight chain isomer first of all. So that's just pentane. And then I draw an isomer of it, which is 2,2-dimethylpropane. We'll start by drawing the longest part of the chain first of all, which is the propane end. So that's obviously three carbons. The methyl group tells you that you have a CH3 group. There's two of them, the di part of the name, and these both occur on the second carbon. So that's up here. So just check the formulae, make sure that they're both C5H12, which they are, and now have a look at the shape of them. Look, 2,2-dimethylpropane is very spherical in shape, whereas C5H12, pentane, has a linear shape. This means that various molecules of pentane can interact with each other, therefore polarising the electron clouds, 2,2-dimethylpropane being the spherical shape that it is means that molecules of 2,2-dimethylpropane cannot interact as well. They cannot polarise their electron clouds as well. So they'll have weaker London forces and lower boiling points. So pentane has stronger London forces than 2,2-dimethylpropane and therefore it'll have a higher boiling point.